Oh my god, your poor dad. I should say it? You should, you say, should it. say it. Okay. Do you remember what to say? Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. All right. Welcome back to Your Poor Dad. You can't choose your sisters, but you can choose your podcast. So thank you for joining us and being the fourth Brant sister. Welcome back, everybody. We're back, bitches. Season two, baby. <laughs> back and better than ever. Well, you know, we need to address the elephant in the room. Okay. Our new set. It looks so good. It looks really, really good. I can't believe, first of all, that we all agreed mm -hmm. that this was going to work. And mm -hmm. I can't believe it actually came together and it looks like pretty decent. We'll see how it looks like on my computer. but Yeah. So in person, it looks really good. I know it does. It looks like nice, clean and sharp. Um, It was a pretty stressful process. I, if you don't mind me saying like Please. I've 99% <laughs> set this whole thing up um <laughs> what do you think my one all right I, I did contribute by saying i don't think that idea is gonna work and yeah. then i walked away um <laughs> but it was when i was setting this up it was a really it was probably the most hectic and stressful week of bailey's life well like year like mm -hmm. school year or whatever mm -hmm. so she was like see ya not gonna help don't even care and i'm like cool 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 mm -hmm. um and all like i was I called our poor dad because he is handy Andy and I'm like I need I need this to to be good and I need Jade to think that it looks good I was yeah. like it cannot look bad <laughs> and we went through so many things and I'm like dad you don't understand I was like what I don't want is for Jade to walk in and be like mm, I don't like it <laughs> and he was like well you know what he's like because I was really nervous about the chains I like them a lot now I like the but chains I was, when, before I saw it I was scared it was gonna look trashy it looks like we're it sipping looks, coffee on a late night show it looks great but at first I was like dad I don't know about the chains and he's like well Jade's gonna have to get over it <laughs> and okay. I was like no we want it to look great no I think I always pictured it with like a chains or string or something. It, it feels very like vintage late night show, which is like kind of the inspiration for this like setup. I actually saw this um, video of my doppelganger, if I may say that. <laughs> is it weird to say like my doppelganger? Well, who are you well, going to say? Sophia Ritchie. Okay, that's Jesus. what I thought. <laughs> but like it's so like, it's so like self gratuitous to be like, <laughs> it's like my doppelganger, Megan Fox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but so sophia ritchie did um some sort of like ad with like sol de janeiro or, you know that brand bum bum cream i don't know are those two different brands i, I have no idea anyway she did this ad and it was like very like vintage late night show vibes and i was like oh my gosh that could be your poor dad because we're like literally on our own late night show yeah so anyways i i, I like the it. chains i think the chains look great and no, i'm proud of perfect. you for doing it Thank you. I was really the proud middle of child. Like she was so middle child in that moment. Yeah, I just really loved the responsibility that I had at hand, and yeah. because I, the thing about me, I'm gonna stress about it. But what I love is like I did this. Yeah, and I can take I can take the credit. Oh, for and this I heard and you. It, I, it feels so good. because it when we were in our like sister broadcast on Instagram, she's like, I did it all by myself. <laughs> I did. I love being able to take the credit when I can. Right. Um, and I also knew that just saying that I, your first idea wasn't going to work and walking away. I was like, she's going to spin for hours and then she's going to come out and say, OK, now I need you to just hold this up. She doesn't want other ideas and yeah, contributions yeah. it worked out better that yeah. way yeah yeah well the one thing i don't like that dad said was jade has to get over it. it's gonna look like i well, don't don't worry i said that's not what's gonna happen i know but like that is so dad to just like get, if it's just up and it looks like shit it doesn't matter well, okay so but i think it's because thing, Paige was spiraling and he I was, was like you just need to and do something and if jade's gonna have an opinion then she can come and help but then dad That's and I right. spiral together sometimes. Oh my God. You two spiraling is like so much. But what was funny is we're on the phone for about an hour and I'm finally, I'm like, dad, I have to get off the phone with you because I have to go to Lowe's. Okay. None of this is going to happen if I don't go to Lowe's. Yeah. So no. And you two together talking like you will talk in circles, in circles, in circles, in the, the longest possible circle ever. Like when you guys are telling a story, I'm like. I'll, I'll find myself like do dozing off and then coming back to the conversation and, and I'm just like well, how the fuck are we still stuck on this one detail that does not matter well after we planned everything out I go to Lowe's I call him and then he goes 
just get creative. And I said, excuse me, we were not on the phone for an hour discussing every detail for me to get here and get creative. Yeah. Anyways, I love it. And you guys, I'm so glad we're back. Me too. Um, So maybe we should give like a little update on where we've been. Absolutely. Um, Briefly, I will say my journey with Roman, um, guys, he, his allergies, I've talked about it before. They were so bad. He's getting so so much better. He's getting so much better. We were going to the vet one hour on the way there, one hour on the way back, every four days for shots. Why one hour away? It's in Cedar Park. There's no vet in Austin proper? Not that I trust anymore. Um, After the whole Europe Europe fiasco. um, Anyways, so now we're doing the shots here. And when I say we, I mean Aunt B is administering the shots. Um, It's been such a journey the past two three months um but he's looking so good we're so happy about it and if this is not a cautionary tale to anyone who wants a frenchie then i don't know what it is truly if you're gonna get a frenchie one i do highly recommend but the only way i would ever get another frenchie is if before you take that dog you have the vet one million dollars in your bank account (laughs) you get pet insurance before that first visit period I also just think like you need to really take a long, hard look at your finances and say, am I okay spending thousands of dollars a month on my dog? Because they're so cute. They're so snuggly. Their snorts are so fun. But then like you take them to the vet. Every single Frenchie has a problem. Mm -hmm. It's either a skin problem or it's like that back spine issue because their spines are like too short and like all of them have like paralyzed back legs. (laughs) Yeah. Or you need to make sure you have someone that could administer these shots because I'm so good at it. I think I found my true calling. And if you ever are in the market for like a golden retriever, great dogs, just be okay with having hair in every single orifice of your body and in every food and every like every corner of your life. I will say um, since just to wrap up, you know, what I've been dealing with on our little hiatus, it's been the vet visits. But also, um, because it's been an hour there, an hour back every four days, it's given me a really amazing opportunity to only listen to Tortured Poets Department. So that is the silver lining in this whole process. And we'll be getting into TTV. Yeah, we'll get, yeah. And show them your shirt. (laughs) I actually got Paige this shirt because I love it. This, um, I have like a friend on TikTok, and her name is Gigi, first of all. And she has like a print department and then she, or print department, it's like a print shop. And you can buy like prints, like art for your walls, or you could buy shirts and sweatshirts. And she's like, let me send you something. And then I was like, oh wait, VP of Tortured Poets Department. This is before the thing even came out. Yeah. I wore this the day that it came out. Anyways, I've been listening to the album a lot. Um, That's what's been up with me. Bailey? I've also been listening to the album a lot and really I've just been working and I'm two weeks away from summer so who knows I'll be a completely different person in two weeks yeah you're very stressed because when we were talking about like bringing the podcast back (laughs) it was major sister fights just to give you guys like a little you know peek behind the curtain you know breaking the fourth wall when we first set out to even make this podcast Paige was the one who was psychotic like (laughs) truly she had like a moment where she was possessed by the devil and she was screaming at us and then yep Bailey this time around was shockingly she was the one who was I don't know what you were possessed by you were possessed by your like stubbornness it was like the demon that lives inside me had to come up because I was like I'm going to lose it. Well, yes. And it was like every everything you presented to us was fair, but mm-hmm. then we presented a solution right back and then you kept going back to the problem. Because it yes. was like it was like these things were were a struggle for you. We were like, we hear you. Yeah. And so moving forward, we will do it differently. This is our process now. And then um it was like you couldn't get over that like they those things were annoying to you in the past and we're like right yeah we're like no that's totally fair they were annoying we are annoying and this is what we are going to do to fix it but it was like it's like since we couldn't go back and like rewrite those little annoyances you know you were just like yeah having it whoa but look at us now look at us now look at us couldn't be happier (laughs) bailey's so pumped to be here no i really am you are yeah okay good because 
I thought you said this podcast was the most miserable part of your day. <laughs> I said every time we have to record <laughs> Jesus criminy. <laughs> and I'm like, that honestly kind of reminded me, you know, that's that scene in Sex in the City where it's like, um, like, do you do you love do you love your kids or your husband like every day? And she's like, not not all day every day but every day yes like i love this i don't remember if she's talking about marriage or like being a mom mm -hmm. but it's something like yes like i basically you're miserable but you're just doing it yeah it's like well that's it's like i like this podcast like sometimes it can it can be stressful sometimes we can get in a fight but i love days that we record yeah i love it so much and when bailey, bailey was like it's like miserable it. i was like oh i feel so different yeah i like it well, maybe it's because me, because like Bailey will come in from work and I'm like, are you wearing that? And she's like, literally. Well, yeah, she just like doesn't want you to be a bitch. When yeah. I've had like so many people asking so many things of me all day. And then it's like, first thing is a negative thing. It's like, OK, why am I doing it? <laughs> but it's going to be summer and it's going to be so much happier. I know. That'll be nice. Um, what have you been up to? Um, just same old, same old. No, that's literally a lie. You've been traveling a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, well, our most recent travel. Well, I was in Las Vegas twice in one month, which was very exciting for me because if there's one thing about me, I absolutely love Las Vegas. And I have a theory that I think if you like Las Vegas, you also might be a Disney adult. And you might like not even know that you're a Disney adult. Okay. Because one thing I remember how much I loved, what I loved about Las Vegas when we were little were, were all like the, it was like larger than life. Yeah. And that's what I love about Disneyland. It's like, it's a whole other world. And so I was there with my two favorite Disney adults, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Sr. Because they also are huge Disney heads. <laughs> and, um, well, and Mr. Disney Roberts was there. Ears. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went there for Mrs. Roberts's um, birthday and it was so much fun. We saw Mariah Carey Love. and Mariah Carey can sing so well. But let me tell you, she is like not going to give you anything else. She's only going to give you her voice. She like barely tiptoes across <laughs> the stage. At one point in the show, she lays down for half the show <laughs> on a couch and it was like that was really entertaining to see because like you you hear about this diva and then you just see her in person yeah so that was really fun and then we saw a Cirque show which at treasure island which is where we used to frequent and yeah. it's like honestly treasure island has not changed one little bit cool so if you ever are back in vegas you should check it out it's like honestly that's where the iconic picture of us of is where the pirate, like a pirate just holding me yeah mom was like here take her and you yeah. like with your puffy nipples i mean with my that was like peak puffy nipples <laughs> and i just like had my little roxy dress on and i like i don't i and, like, feel like are you wearing tiny glasses they were very y2k glasses <laughs> like they were tiny you're just like and I'm i had a hot. choker my hair was slicked back and that was my fifth grade graduation dress and for me that was like the nicest thing yeah. i've ever owned in my life and i wore that dress till i literally was busting out of it <laughs> and like it was it was like my one little thing you know because yeah. like we didn't really get like a lot of new clothes i feel like i feel like we got new clothes at the beginning of the year yeah and that, and was, that it. was kind of it i know yeah. and then it was like i was i like literally that's where my broke mindset comes from like i like hold on to things forever and ever and ever and i'm like this is my roxy dress and i would like i remember i showed up to like bailey's um it was some performance Bailey was doing and mom's like don't wear these shorts they're too small for you and I was like these are my only Roxy shorts and I showed up and she was so pissed I was like buy me new shorts like I, what am I supposed well, to do I think the problem is like you wanted your Roxy shorts yeah and that's what was expensive like we could have gone to Ross and gotten shorts that fit you that weren't Roxy I know but like I needed you Roxy needed, and that's the problem I know because it was the same I felt the exact same way with the miss me jeans that had like the 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 back like butt pockets like yeah. all of the you knew those miss me jeans and i had one pair but all of my friends had like three four pairs i know and so obviously like i'm gonna wear the same pair every single day yeah because i need those those miss me jeans yeah, yeah. And it was like, I don't even know if it was, it was definitely like a status thing, but it was also like Roxy was so cool. Like yeah. it was just the, the tags. Remember how like the colorful the tags were and we'd like save the tags <laughs> and we would go to the chick sale every, which, which like that unlocked a new um, memory because I mean, Mr. Arts. <laughs> 
<laughs> he looked so scared. <laughs> Whoa. Mr. Roberts and his friends were talking about going to the chick sale. And I was like, oh, I haven't talked about the chick sale in the big tent. I know it was like a big tent. It was like every year this active, I, what would you even call it? Like active store. They had like a huge sale. Yeah, kind of like a, kind of like a, a, Dick's. a Dick's. I think Dick's bought chicks. That Whoa. Tracks. Yeah. So anyways. Anyways. Oh, and then we also went to Lake Havasu. Love. Which is like another Brant family fave. We used to go to Lake Havasu. And one of um, Mr. Robert's friends has three kids. And there are four three and one and a half so they are like babies they had them back to back to back wow and then the other one had a seven month old and then it's me and mr roberts you know we're just like hey (laughs) um but it reminded it like really brought some perspective because we used to go to the river with dad and his friends Mm -hmm. and mom had three kids to take care of and like dad (laughs) and his friends were probably like drinking like mr roberts and his friends were and it's like the mom she just had like arms coming out of everywhere like every time a kid would like do something like an arm would come and like (laughs) bring him back in and i'm just like oh my god you are like a superhuman yeah it was crazy go go gadget extendo arm because like we would be on the boat and like we were going fast and there was like a kid like trying to move up to the front of the boat and like the boat's like bouncy <laughs> like the kid could just fly out and she's like Bink! and she just like had arms on these kids at all times she'd have like three of them in her i'm like wow that's probably how mom was with us yeah speaking of mom happy mother's day happy mother's day happy mother's day and um Bay, uh, not Bailey. Sorry, not Bailey. Jade and I are actually gonna go uh, meet Mom in Seattle with, this week with her with two, her two best, friends. best friends. We're gonna go see the Rolling Stones, um, and that'll be a nice little Mother's Day. What's your favorite Rolling Stones song? Um, the Beast of Burden. <laughs> I like Beast of Burden, and I also like it's a ha. Guitar woman, yeah. Give me, give me. What's yours? Um, my favorite's Wild Horses. Thank you for asking. Wild Horses is a, good one. a really good one. We were doing music trivia the other night, and Paige got every Rolling Stone song wrong. So, really? Yep. Yeah, she has some wanting wow. to do. I said I really need to listen to the Rolling Stones. It's just hard when I'm always listening to. TTP. I know. Mr. Roberts just said, "Have a good pod." Let's send him a picture. This is like Podception. Hey. Um. He's going to know I just ate hot Cheetos because my tongue is bright red. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so let's get into some of the current events that are going on. I mean, I think we know where we're going to start. Like, there's, we literally can't not start with this. And I just got a text from Taylor, and she said, Travi is there. How are we not? I know. <laughs> Travis is there. And so he's in a suite. Okay, let's just get into it. We need to talk about Tortured Poets Department. The Tortured Poets Department, Mm -hmm. TTPD. So that came out when I was in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Roberts, just to set the scene, you were like, at, you were here. Bailey and and I were here. Yeah. And so this album comes out and it's early because I'm on the West Coast time for me, you know, and I am like sitting there and Mr. Roberts is playing craps and I'm just like, have my phone to my ear (laughs) trying to like listen to this album. And finally, I was like, you know what? You're going to do craps. I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to put on my Beats headphones and I'm going to listen to this shit. So let's get well, into Well, and so the way it went for us, I was in my room, Bailey. Wait, you were in your room? Well, yes. okay. So I had my like very horrible, no good, very bad day that day. And I, Paige was like, what do you want? Like, do you want to go take a shower? And then I'll like set the vibe. And I was like, I don't even know if I can like vibe. He goes hot Cheeto tongue. That's funny. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so Paige set the vibe in her own room because I knew that I was um, a little overstimulated from my day at work. So I so I set all of my I lit all of my Taylor Swift candles, and I put my headphones in so I could listen to as loud as I could, like mm-hmm. in my ears. Um, I almost immediately was just started sobbing, <laughs> yeah. and I'm I'm every song was making me cry harder than the last I had to just grab it I grabbed a towel screw the <laughs> toilet paper like I'm just grabbing a towel wiping my eyes blowing my nose into this towel because like I'm gonna be there all night yeah and um it's funny because we I was in my room and Paige was in her room but we both had our bedroom doors open so the dogs could go and I could just hear Paige like sniffling and like <laughs> sobbing and catching her breath <laughs> it was 
it was so much more emotional than I was expecting to hear. I don't I don't know why. Um, it was so the first listen, I was just so sad. I was so sad hearing the feelings. Like it felt like we were reading her diary. Like there were yeah. certain things I wasn't ex- that seemed really personal that I felt so sad that she was that I felt her feel, you know? Yeah. And I think it's important to remember because I think some people don't put this into perspective with Taylor's work. Like she's literally writing about a specific feeling. So it's not like she felt like this all day, every day, which I think some people think that she does, you know? Yeah. I think that, I mean, also her going through a breakup with Joe, I mean, that was a really long relationship that's going to take some time to to get over it. Maybe she's not super sad every moment of the day, but it's like, gosh, it it sucks not having that one person there anymore. Like, that's yeah. going to, like, take a little time. But so th- I also think that, like, it seemed like her relationship, she was grieving it while she was in it a little bit because it seems like he couldn't give her what she wanted, and she talked about that a lot in her yeah. music. So I think the thing that really – and this is what I could relate to because same – in my long-term relationship, but then you have this situationship that like lights you back up yeah, and it brings all these emotions of like uncertainty and like, do they want me? They don't want me. They want me. They it's don't just want like, me. Even though it's toxic, it's life. It's, it's life, life that you weren't having from this like dead kind of just like, it was like, yeah, like, like going through the motions. And there's of the- really like, what is there to say about like losing a six year relationship besides like, there's nothing that they did to each other, you know, maybe. Yeah, but it, it but it's like so with Maddie, it was this like new energy, and even though it was toxic, it's like, but we we're in this together. Like we we're gonna be perfect for each other. It was this like whirlwind. It was this like cyclone, um, and it was just traumatic, and it was so sad. And to which hear it. what situation ship like that is not so traumatic. Like honestly, it reminded me of Colorado. Yeah, yeah. I was like oh my gosh, like this, You, I could write an album about this short lived little thing in my life that like, I don't, and also she had a line that um, it like, I forget what it was. It was something like, I'm still piecing the clues together to, because to make sure that it was real. Mm-hmm. Because like, I think a lot of people, they downplay situationships to you. Like all oh, my friends did, they were like, oh my God, situationship, like who cares? But it's like a situationship tortures you more than anything. Cause you're like, that's all I can fixate on because it's like you never get it completed like it's not like like joe she had him the relationship ran its course it's done like she never got like it's an itch you can't scratch yeah and like no one wants to hear you talk about it because it's like you were together for six weeks like why do you care so much and And it's it's like like, you weren't there you don't understand what it was like for us people think i'm nuts if i even talk about the existence of you (gasps) okay that's it that's it so that's the line Let's go into some of our some of our top songs. I think we all have like the same ones in common. I don't okay, know. But guess guess my top songs. You can I can do it with a broken heart. Yes. Um Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? Obviously. obviously. That's like so mean. But Daddy I Love Him. I like that one. Okay, you don't, obviously. Ah, I like I like it now that I've seen her perform it. Okay. So what what like is it are those the two that those you are would two, say? those are my two bops okay um i also like down back gang at the gym yeah that's that was mine and bailey's first, first song. favorite yeah first i like fave. down bad um those are probably my top oh i love florida florida that's, that's one like of one of my bailey's. favorites that's so bailey it's florence, so florence and the I machines is so bailey. i know um i okay so obviously down bad um i'm s- okay black dog I'm going to get, I'm going to get you back. Um, I look through people's windows. I look through so people's high school. Windows. Those are like my, okay. I'm going to tell you something right now. I actually hate that she put out a double album, like, because I can barely process one album at a time. And with the first listen, I'm going to be real. I, it sounded like Charlie Brown's parents. I had no idea what she was saying. It was just like words coming at me, like alchemy. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> well, she explains it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, listen, she talks I was like it. I couldn't my my brain couldn't keep up with the words like yours does like you when you hear music like you can piece together what she's trying to say I was like where's the fucking beat 
Okay, I hear what you're saying. And I think that was some feedback that people were having is like, where's the beat? Where's the, yeah. where's the upbeat? And and the thing is, that just wasn't this album. I feel yeah. like that was Midnight's. We just had Which is why a Midnight's very, is my Yeah, my and favorites. that's totally fine. But it's like, she, this vibe wasn't the Midnight's vibe. I predict that the next album we get is going to be more upbeat. Yeah. But it's like not every album is going to be the same. And that's what that's what I personally love no, about Taylor because it is so different. I like that about her too. Like, yeah. And I'm not saying it's like a bad album or whatever. It's just like it's like I'm a rep girly. I'm a Midnight's girly. I'm a 1989. Like yeah. that's yeah. my vibe. But like I appreciate and I like how she writes like it's yeah. very it makes you really think like I couldn't even understand it I had to like literally get the lyrics out and read them all I also love how like sexual she is um without saying like really dirty words but they mean really dirty things you yeah. know what I mean like what if he's written mine on my upper thigh only in my mind yeah and she's like my my bed sheets are ablaze when I scream his name it's like waves are about to like crash over me it's like well that's that seems very literal to me well it's like (laughs) it's not very secret (laughs) i know but it's like those are it's like the what she's not she could have just like said i'm having an orgasm i'm touching myself having an orgasm (laughs) (laughs) like that's what she could have said and she didn't right right anyways or touch me while your boys play grand theft auto i'm trying to stifle my size like that's i feel like that's very pretty clear yeah but she didn't Never, I don't even stifle know. my size. I know, but like what she meant was like, you know. I think she said what she meant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where we need to talk about the first show back, Paris. First of all, like how iconic would it be to be in Paris? That's the only thing that could get you back to Paris. Is that is Taylor. the only thing that could get me back. And we all kind of knew that she was going to have eras in the yeah. set list because we saw like little snippets of the Fortnite mm-hmm. YouTube short. There was a TTB like TTPD. Yeah. B is P and D together. When you think about it. It is. And so... When we, I was watching the live stream and I was like, oh, just like, I'm not going to be obsessive over the Eros tour because I've seen it so many times on TikTok live and in person. But then and it was all different. Then now I was all obsessed. Then she came out in the orange jumpsuit and I was like, okay, now I'm back to watching a four hour concert on my phone. 100%. <laughs> because I need to see, first of all, every single outfit she's wearing. What songs did we cut? What are we merging? What's shorter? What's happening? Yeah. I'm... Ugh. I love that she merged folklore and Evermore because you know, first of all, I'm just not an Evermore girly. Like I like Willow Willow. and that's about it. I'm not like Champagne Problems is like good, you know, (laughs) for me. Yeah. Personally, because you know me. Because you like more of the bops. Um, What I have to say is I'm so thankful that she added the tortured poets department era into the set i'm so jealous that i didn't haven't seen it yet um i love the songs that she chose to to throw in yeah um and and i like the songs that she took out like we don't need the archer yeah 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 um but i am just so freaking excited that she that Travis is there today and that she's going to be singing so high school because every that is the shortest little clip of a song that she has in there mm-hmm. and everything about it is you know they have like she walks through the tunnel like the football tunnel yeah she like walks through the tunnel obviously Travis it's like the cheerleader thing football the bleachers cheerleader, the bleachers she does two of his little like touchdown choreography things like everything it's so freaking cute i can't stand it i know it looks like he's there with his friends too but like it's hard to see who he's there with um but there's just a bunch of like tall big guys in the (laughs) city but paris is like a very easy city to get to so i'm sure those football players found a way to get there yeah sure they did um so do you want to talk some shit okay first of all (laughs) the new 1989 co-ward is so beyond hideous i cannot believe that she changed that up i like that she's doing like two different pages about to like fucking punch me <laughs> um i like that she changed up the cohort cohort because i was getting like a little like bored of the other ones but like 
I don't like the colors together. I don't like the pink and blue. Okay. I don't like the um, skater skirt. It's okay. giving like Little Mermaid. Okay. Well, I like, I, I can agree that I don't like all of the color, like the color blocks, color matching or whatever. I don't like all of those together. But I really love like the orange and the pink because that is like that. What is it? The VMAs? Uh, no, the orange and the pink lover suit. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about like the the 1989. It's like the little crop top and the skirt. Yeah, like that is like so s- similar to the. Remember that award show where she had like the like the orange or pink crop top and then like the orange or pink uh, skirt. Oh yeah, it's like it. Ca- no, kind but of that's re- not orange and pink. This is like well, that's I don't like the green. I don't. Okay, I'm just gonna say I don't like that, and I hate i absolutely fucking hate the secret song dress like it's so ugly the pink okay, one. that's what i want to talk about why it's do you so hate that? hideous what do it's, you mean it's so plain it's so hideous you are the most y- everyone wants to work with taylor right now like she could literally have the coolest fucking clothes and she does for the most part the rest of her outfits Paige, you can't just blindly but, like everything no. she does I think that this secret song dress is an upgrade from the last one. I really I like the last one. I like the last one. I think it was so much better. No, because she's not fumbling with the sleeves. She always had trouble. Like sometimes they were in, sometimes they were out. And I think that it's easier for her to like move around and she doesn't like have to like trip over anything. I think she, it's like easier I think for she her could, to get in no. behind, like in and out of the piano. I'm I, I'm here for it. I hate it. Um, I do like the, um, the tortured poets, like I get the, the wedding dress with like the writing on it. I love it. Loves. I I do too. It's, it's fine. It like represents the era very well. And I love when she goes into that sparkly little bra and underwear. I Mm -hmm. told, that is so funny and, and unexpected. Like when I first saw that little skit, I was I was shocked. I was shocked and I was obsessed. I love it. And I like so far that it's been, you know, it was the black, it was it was the white, it was the silver. It's like, what are we going to get tonight? The four, it, is it just going to do like those three colors? It, is there going to be a gold? I don't know. But I love that little outfit so freaking much. How am I going to be that for Halloween if I don't start like working out really hard and dieting? Yeah, it's a good goal. Okay. It's a great goal. Guys, that's what I'm going to be for Halloween. Okay, so... And last but not least, we should talk about like the songs from TTBD in the New Era's tour set list. So we love. Who was it? Afraid a little me when she has the. It looks like she's levitating. It's so cool. I need her to give us a music video for Who's Afraid of Little Me. Like that needs to be a music video. That's got to be the next one. And I think it. I think it needs to be that one and Down Bad. I love down. I love the the space like the UFO. I love that with down bad. I love. Um, I do. I really love. That's my favorite part. It's like when she's like she looks like the Exorcist when she's just like leaned back like that and it's like and then the new her. note on. But what if I did? Yeah, love. I that. love that. Um, I, I oh the, thing, my, the smallest man who ever lived oh. is I love that in the in the tour so freaking much with like the drums they're like marching into the freaking are those battlefield. The dancers that are drumming yeah because they're like they're i don't know if they're actually but drumming how or did if they it's like a prop. how did they um learn how to drum i don't know that they i don't know that they are actually i mean i'm sure they're like they're just know, tapping around they're just tapping and then they have tip, the tip, sound tap, of it. because the thing is is like whenever she gets shot the first time some of the dancers like fall because like some of the dancers get shot too but then yeah. she like keeps going. Then she gets shot again. Some of the dancers like also it's like I think they're it's more of like for prop purposes. Yeah. I'm just I love it. I love how dramatic she is. One thing I do, can relate to Taylor is how she does not let anything go. No. Yeah. Like literally at all. And which is relatable. Brings, you know what? I'm so glad we're back because you know what I've been wanting to talk about? What? Whenever you however many episodes ago when you were like oh Paige I think that Taylor and Kim have totally gotten past everything and everything is fine and I said no freaking way and then guess what confirmation no freaking way like this I don't think I would have said that because yes you did she had the time it was like after the Brittany Mahomes like skims thing and no I think that Taylor wouldn't care about Brittany Mahomes being on the skims but you said 
because I said something along the lines of t- Taylor is never going to forgive Kim Kardashian. Like that's not going to be a thing. And you were like, I think that they've already they've already worked it out. Like they've already talked. I'm going to find that episode. Okay, well maybe, but because honestly, I think that Taylor is keeping this going because she knows first of all people like you will like keep it going as well and they honestly think that there is a world where these two will do something together in the future and it will be but break the internet no the reason why the i can agree with that only if that would require kim kardashian to say sorry i think she would but like then why hasn't she because what kim has done so far you is don't like, know that she hasn't kim's been like oh we're over it like she said that literally it. like six years ago at a watch what happens live i'm just saying if she i don't see kim being the type of person i think kim would like, one million percent be that person kim is a businesswoman she like kim so also is a libra that, and libras are it, fair i think she would do it as a business decision but there's what taylor wants is like Someone like Nikki Glaser, who's going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that this happened. And it was just like a genuine apology. And Taylor's like, literally, thank you for the apology and we're good. I think Kim can do that. Kim is a very logical, fair person. So then she just needs to do it. I don't know. Everyone was so mad that Kim was at the Tom Brady roast. She got booed so much. People are so like fucking lame though. I don't know why she got booed at the roast, which I thought was so funny. And... N- not the booing but like i just thought the roast was so the funny. roast was really funny um but she wasn't the only one that got booed uh what's his face um belichick got booed a lot too well yeah but i don't know but doesn't I, he deserve that i don't know i i was confused why kim got had so many boos i don't know it just disturbed this anyways me. um i can't stop singing that song um okay so did we beat ttbd probably okay can we go to vanderpump rules yep okay so vanderpump rules the finale was just on last tuesday Mm -hmm. what did we think i didn't watch it okay um but do you did you have you watched the rest of the season only the beginning but Paige has kind of like filled me in a little bit so this might be surprising to me okay so where is so it kind of it, right now, as it stands, it's kind of like the rest of the cast against Katie and Ariana. And as as the season has gone on, it's kind of like there's been this divide. And then there's Sheena pretending to be in the middle. But really, she's on she's the on other side. She's on Sandoval's side. Exactly. The thing is, th- I found this season really hard to remember to watch. I would... I. I used to, whenever we got on Vanderpump, I was like, oh my gosh, I was so excited for Tuesdays. For I was like waiting for it to happen. And then I kept, I started forgetting because it was the same storyline every single week. Yeah. That was really, really dragged out. And it, the same, it was mainly Sheena always trying to make it about herself. Yeah. And tr- she's always wrong. She's, I don't understand. Every single season. Every season single time and there was an interview she did at the beginning of the season where she's like i've never had a good season like everyone else has had like a good season except for me and it's like well maybe you should like stop trying to be such a people pleaser just be yourself be because yourself. sometimes it's not gonna work out and sometimes people aren't gonna like you for it but sometimes people are really gonna like you for it like and stop like wavering that's the thing that i don't get like she needs to find her fucking morals and stick to that like figure out what means the most to you and keep doing that but she straddles both sides well because here's the thing i think that the friendship that ariana has given sheena over so many years yeah like is so much more meaningful but sheena cannot get over the fact that sandoval gave her Her and brock money and i'm sorry that's embarrassing for you because like you (laughs) and brock should be in a better financial state to where it's like of all the people like if if you have to borrow money because you know covid was a hard time for a lot of people but like he gave you that money for this exact reason. A hundred. That's, that's the, the thing, problem. That's like, what I don't understand. How these people, that how Sheena and a lot of other people don't see past the things he does for her, and it the things he does for he her. The things he does for everyone is because you're gonna owe me later. You're gonna owe me later. Just like how he does stuff for Jax, how he did stuff for James. Like he, I don't feel like he does it out of the 
goodness of his heart because it's also so extravagant mm-hmm. and so crazy like him flying out the on this latest episode he flew out his own music technician <laughs> to help with sheena and she's like sheena sheena's like you did that for me yeah like that is i don't know how she can see can't see past what what it really is like yeah. it isn't kindness like he's or when they forgot the ranch with the pizza and he like ran out to go to the driver and ariana's like he's doing too much like he's this doing is doing too it's much so performative to show like look at all this stuff i'm doing because for you here, guys because here's the thing it's like ariana would be the one where it's like if she like if sheena was crying over a breakup ariana is going to your house without the cameras like she's Mm -hmm. gonna go to your house and lay on the couch and like eat taco bell with you like while you're like sad and like be there for you sandoval's not gonna do that well and it's different and i think that's where sheena doesn't understand like the it's almost like she doesn't get the true friendship there because ariana would not turn her back on sheena and like if they got into a disagreement she wouldn't go so low and hit her below the belt like sandoval did yeah like sandoval was basically like we were never friends and sheena's having a hard time like remembering how he treated her during that time because sheena hadn't like turned her back she was like holding him accountable for what he did and he was just like basically like fuck you yeah so i don't know it's also i have to say i know this is like heteronormative or whatever but if i have two friends and one's a boy and one's a girl first of all my best friendship if i'm calling both of them my best friends i'm more of a best friend to the girl and especially if the boy did something bad i'm even more loyal to the girl the fact that she is like so hellbent on keeping this friendship with a man i'm just i don't believe that kind of friendship weighs more than like the female female friendship well yeah it's just because she knows that he can he will occasionally like offer something extravagant you yeah. know and it's wild to me like that was just like wild also i'm sorry like i can't stand joe like i cannot <gasps> joe stand joe like she literally i maybe i'm making this up but didn't katie say that like you're irrelevant like what are you like go away like like that is like she is irrelevant and joe so i listened to this podcast i highly recommend if you were like a vanderpump head like me i've listened to it since like the very beginning and it's called sexy unique podcast it used to be called pump podcast anyways so they do this bit Oh, where they like make fun of Joe and they're always like beep boop because <laughs> she's like always making these like insane noises and it's like funny and then you like watch the show and then you're like she's literally saying and doing those noises the thing that confuses me about Joe is like she's the most the weirdest pick me girl ever because it's like she is pick me and to a point where it's like hey bro she literally called uh no it's like bro she's like hey bro yeah dude like whatever yeah. um but then it's like she's in the confessional she's like yeah obviously i like really like him he, well, he doesn't like, want a relationship it's like i what the are thing you? the thing with tom schwartz that i can recognize in myself also i do this is like so joe is like quirky and tom like likes a part of joe but like he mirrors her personality so she thinks like oh my gosh i found my fellow weird person but like to him he's like oh that's just like the personality i'm showing you yeah and i think he wants more of like a romantic connection with somebody and i think joe is giving like very much friend vibes and i think joe like can't see that he is like not always like that he's just like a nice person to her also the fact that she's so freaking delusional oh my gosh so delusional why does she think that she needs katie's support no her apology like the way bailey joe went up to katie and said "Uh, hi katie wait we need to give bailey the backs okay here's the backstory on it just so you can see the full picture of like why this is so fucked up so joe was Kristen Doty's friend you know Kristen Doty, right so Doty, Doty, and so when tom and katie were going through their divorce joe sent katie this text that was like kind of like a manically written text it was like bieber loves you i love you i'm so sorry blah 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 and so 
Katie was like, okay, cool, whatever. Then Joe immediately goes and like starts couch surfing on Tom Schwartz's couch. Then him and her start like hooking up and blah, blah, blah. So then she approaches Katie at the finale party and is like, I'm sorry for what you did. And Katie's like, or she said, I'm sorry if I made you feel this way. And Katie's <laughs> like, no, not if like you literally yeah. did this. And it makes no fucking sense why you would say I'm sorry and then start fucking my ex-husband and so and so katie says like it's not i'm sorry if it's like what you did was wrong and blah blah blah. and she's like okay i'm sorry and katie's like okay and katie stops talking yeah and then joe's like well like don't you think you owe me an apology too and katie's like the fuck like, yeah then she just what literally like activated katie yeah and then she's listing off every single thing it's like you're insane that you would expect an, apo- an apology the way, back and it's like anything that katie did was after joe started anything so if she's sorry if she made katie feel some way the only reason katie would have done anything is because she made her feel that way she's yeah. like you're not very welcoming to me in the group bitch why the fuck would why, i be welcoming to why you why would i welcome you in the group first of all you're not only like having sex and trying to be in a relationship with my ex-husband but second of all you were like best friends with Raquel slash Rachel like that's another piece of that like I think that's not being shown is that I didn't know that Joe was like hanging out with Rachel she's gone on Rachel's podcast she's like she was oh yeah hanging she's, out she's, with them during the whole scandal whenever someone asked about that she said something like oh, well, what was I supposed to say? I didn't know exactly what was going on between Tom and Ariana. Well, you knew that they were, that at least everyone else thought they were together. Like, what do you mean? It was, she's, Joe is just like a weird, like, person who should not be, she's not built for TV. And like, she makes zero sense. She was on a live the other day and she was reading these texts that Tom, she's been on live a few times and talking about her and Schwartz and all this stuff. And then finally, Tom Schwartz sent her this long text that was like, please stop talking about me. You're acting weird. You're acting. It's almost like you are. This is the only text we're getting. We're not getting like the other side of what she's giving him because he was like, this is borderline like threatening. So we don't know what she said to like ignite that. But she's like, first of all, I'm a woman. And then she that that was her like what and she's like i'm trying to be very calm right now and it was just like she's very like weird with her like that was her explanation (laughs) of why like tom shouldn't be feeling that way i'm a woman i'm trying very hard to be like calm she's just like a very weird person also i fucking hate their um i hate the way they talk to each other and like their nicknames like joseph t money It's so weird. Like, tell me, you guys, tell me that he is trying to put you in the friend zone without telling me. Well, and when she was, who was she talking to when she was trying to explain the, she was like, yeah, and then one time I just like was joking around. I said, T-Money, and he was like, that's funny. So I just kept calling him that. I know. That was so embarrassing. He's like, but remember their conversation they had? in front of i forget they were like in front of a venue and he was like hey remember and she goes we are not together <laughs> she starts <laughs> doing the robot wait it's like she's literally an snl character she's like we are not together even though it is obvious and he's like yeah joseph i miss you maybe we'll get married in eight years but it's like why did you just say that to her yeah that's what's weird or whenever he's like yeah i'm going to this like singles event tonight and she's like oh i want to go and he's like okay cool like yeah you can come and she's like he invited me to this and then she's like I know that this is a singles event, but like we're here together. It's so that's weird where the that delusion. I'm comes like, in. are you okay? You invited yourself to this event. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how the reunion goes because they have not watched the ending, and the ending is very. Um, it's like they break the fourth wall. Lala basically says, "I've never seen someone get broken up with and then turn into God." Basically, they're mad that Ariana did not have a conversation with Sandoval at the finale, and so now the cast is turning on her because they're like, "We all bleed out for the show, and you're not." But Ariana is like not not showing things. She's very open about how she does not want to talk to Tom, and some of her um like like i arguments like she's screaming and it feels like a little 
too real also kind of like going back to the taylor swift emotion it's like ooh, i'm seeing like a really intimate thing that like feels a little uncomfortable because it's like a little too real and that's why i'm like I actually prefer seeing Ariana like that because that's how she feels versus if you guys are forcing her to have a conversation with Tom. I personally don't need to see that again. I've seen her yell at him all season long and and he's just going to keep trying to gaslight her. Ariana, like, sorry. Sorry that I... Sorry. And the fact that he's apologizing on camera and he... is taking him so long to get it through his thick skull why she is so pissed at him. It's like, to me... I don't need to see that play yeah. out. And I think like it's them wanting to, they think that we need to see that. But he's not, I don't think he's ever in his lifetime ever going to understand why he was wrong in this situation. No. Ever. Because he keeps going back to the same point that we were not doing well before. Yeah. And it's like, that doesn't matter. It's like that betrayal is the reason why it matters anyways so the, at the reunion they watch that last part together and then ariana's crying and she's like wow i w- i thought a whole different thing was going on this season basically everything is going on behind my back and so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because sheena is again going to be like i can't make it about me. <laughs> also can you um, i think i <laughs> would fucking lose my mind if my best girlfriend came to me crying about how she, how much she missed my ex can you imagine anyone doing that to me with mark like can you if anyone did that to you with mark i would i would i would kick their ass no <laughs> like honestly like it no. pisses me off if somebody like lies and betrays you so much and you cut that person out of your life and you obviously have friends together but that's the thing also I don't think Sheena is thinking about like am I actually best friends with Tom individually or am I best friends with Tom and Ariana because we've all been best friends we've gone through this shared experience together but separately would we have maintained our friendship like this for 15 years probably not but the fact that she thinks that it is okay to go to Ariana and complain about how much she misses the person who like literally has betrayed Ariana more than anyone in the world it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life yeah if like with friends like that who needs enemies (laughs) truly no it's like there's like some loyalty and i'm not even like a you need to choose a side kind of person but like there that's a line that like you just don't cross yeah um i'm interested to see lala at the reunion because like she's been a little weird this season to me too yeah her her arguments make no sense to me yeah so but i heard that she kind of like goes off on ariana well her her whole like um thought process behind why ariana needs to have this conversation with tom it doesn't make it makes no sense to me because she's like you don't want to have a conversation with him but you're living under the same roof as him but to me that's two separate issues because her and tom own a home together yeah and lala's like i got the fuck out of that house but like you didn't didn't own that house yeah you you got and also you you had a baby in the situation that you needed to protect yeah it's completely different completely different and i feel like i i asked tick tiktok this but i didn't get like a clear answer but there is something to say about like leaving a property like when you own it like it's almost like you forfeit it or it's like abandonment or something there's there's a reason why she's not leaving and it's none of their fucking business of like why she should have to film with him um something that you don't know that i thought was hilarious because tom was in the beginning it was like okay yeah well he's he offered to buy you out so why aren't you leaving right so what really happened was ariana's legal team was like okay well maybe down payment wise whatever he he put this amount down but like investing into the house all of the furniture all of this all of that um they hired this interior designer designer, and so all of the like she has all of the receipts from that Ariana paid for almost everything. So once she submitted her lawyer submitted to like his legal team, like, okay, this is the actual, like what she put into the house, what he put in, whatever. And like, so to buy out, like he would need to pay. X well, not only instead. that, they bought their house in like 2020 or 2019 where like the interest rates were so low. So 
what their mortgage was, like let's say their interest rate is like very low, so their mortgage is like ten thousand. For him to buy her out, they'd have to refinance the home and then they would have to pay interest rates that are going on right now, which are much higher. So his mortgage would almost like go up to like twenty thousand, let's say. I mean that's not the exact numbers, but it's like a so lot. He can't afford to buy her out and pay the mortgage. Like there's just no way. And she knew that. So she was like, this isn't, you're, you're coming to me with like a, a, a solution that you can't even do. Yeah. So like, it makes no fucking sense. And on top of that, she bought all the furniture in the house. And so I guess there's this other thing going on where she wants to just donate the furniture that they bought together. And he's pissed. He doesn't want that to happen either. It's just what, and oh, now he's trying to convince uh, Schwartz to move in. Oh my god! I know. I think that's just a storyline because there's no fucking way. I hope. I hope. Anyways, so excited for that. <sighs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. We've been recording a long time. I know. Should we talk about Summer House? I I think maybe we don't. I think what we'll say is um, I started watching Summer House and I love it. So <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it. We can do a deep dive next. We time. need to do a deep dive next time because I need to talk about Lindsay and Carl. Well, it that's gonna take so long. I know. I know. Um, and it's just like, it, it seriously is triggering me because of like the addict of it all. Yeah. Um, and so, okay. Should we get into sister stories or should we talk about baby reindeer? Okay. The only thing I want to say about baby reindeer, which I think is so funny because Paige was like, oh my gosh, did you see that the real Martha was on Pierce Morgan? And I was like, yeah. And she's gaslighting us all. And she's like, and she's not gaslighting (laughs) us. And I was like, honestly, like who's telling the truth it's like when you watch the casey anthony thing and you're like oh my god maybe she didn't do it i was like jade are you kidding me like, hey guys exactly what it is like we should give um scott peterson a chance <laughs> like <laughs> literally first he of said all, he didn't do it i thought that baby reindeer was wild because when i first watched it um i did not know that the guy was the guy that it happened to like i didn't know the actor this was his story I had no idea. Yeah. And so I find that out. I'm like, wow. Cause I was watching the show and I'm like, this is so uncomfortable almost because like, it's too real. It's too real. Like it was almost like, okay, we just like saw a snippet of this guy's life and then it was just over. I'm like, I feel so weird that I know some of these things. Yeah. Um, and then to find out that it was like reawakening this thing in her and she's like, He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. He's obsessed with me. He's obsessed with me. Pierce Morgan, bring me on. Like, let me show you. But, and she thought that she was going to slay. And she did, apparently, to some people. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, to, I think, majority of the people out there, it was like, why did you agree to do this? He caught you in every single lie. I know. And didn't she just, like, out she didn't herself? Care. Like, but she didn't care. She, like, literally just keeps going. Like, she's truly the biggest liar ever. No, no. I've never written him any letters. I've never written they any letters. They were talking about the actress and she was like she's not even scottish and he's like no she's like british it's fine but like that was the thing that she was hyper fixated well, she on. was like i'm not as fat as her and it's like that's that's what you think is the difference <laughs> you're not you're not arguing the things that happened you're just saying like you don't think you're you're as heavy as she is like okay lady okay. she's nuts anyways <laughs> so oh, wait can- taylor has a new um 22 shirt what's it, it says i knew you were trouble and then nice. trouble is in red it's kind of lame. No offense. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. TS tour tips. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe she got disabled at 457,000. Not yeah. literally disabled, but like disabled from Instagram. She I'm a, not an ableist. She had, she what are you had, talking about? She had the TS tour tips, Autumn. Um, she had to start Autumn. a new Instagram that everyone had started following her because she gives the best updates and tips um it got like deactivated or something like it didn't it just disabled and so she had to start a new one a new account um yeah we can do listener stories okay bailey oh my okay mommy okay we need to figure out like where they're gonna go to eat in paris pity pity shall i go you shall go all right eight Right, here I go. Listening to your banter and discussions often reminds me of the relationship I share with my own siblings, and it never fails to bring a smile to my face. Your authenticity and chemistry are evident, creating an experience that feels like catching up with old friends. Thank you. 
Now I find myself facing a bit of a dilemma and I could really use your insight and advice. Recently, I've been navigating a situation that has me that has left me feeling a bit conflicted. Allow me to share. Okay. Since moving to Florida a few years ago, <laughs> I've had the pleasure of meeting a fantastic group of girls through Bumble BFF. We've had a blast together, enjoying everything from beach sunsets to mini golf outings and delightful dinners. Recently, two of the girls in the group are celebrating their birthdays with a joint party, and they entrusted us to organize it while keeping it a surprise. Wait. Recently, two of the girls in the group are celebrating their birthdays, and then they're like, but we want you guys to surprise us. I think they're saying, surprise surprise me. Like, so do you like, guys want a birthday party? And it's like, yeah, you guys plan it. So it would be like, I just want to come. It would be like me and Bailey, since our birthdays are close, like, hey, I want you to plan a party for me and Bailey. <laughs> I don't think it's that weird. I don't think it's that weird either. Okay. However, things took an unexpected turn when my boyfriend's good friend and his girlfriend decided to visit us at the last minute. Naturally, my boyfriend invited them to join us at the party, and without much thought, I informed the group about the additional guest. Little did I anticipate the response I received, particularly from one of the birthday girls, who felt it was inconsiderate for me to invite them without consulting them first. Oh. <laughs> Now I'm torn between two options. Should I attend the birthday party solo, respecting the wishes of the birthday girls and helping to ensure the event's success? Or should I spend time with my boyfriend and his visiting friends who we rarely get to see? I feel torn because on one hand, I've invested time, effort, and money into organizing the party and I barely know the girls that are involved. On the other hand, I understand their perspective and don't want to cause any unnecessary tension or discomfort. I think we can end it there because I think it's a lot of like... okay. Like pleasantries. I think. Okay, first these, of all, the birthday girl is a see you next Tuesday. Literally, she's like, nuts. She's like, what are you? What is this? Your wedding? You don't want two people there? Like, how like exclusive are you? And like, do you want the people to plan it for you or do you not? Like, yeah. why do you get to decide the guest list if they're doing everything else? Yeah, and it's not like, oh, we're just inviting two random people. Like, they're in town, and we want to also celebrate your birthday with you, so we're going to bring our friends. I cannot imagine a world where it's... Okay, my birthday this year, you invited some people that I that I didn't know, and it's like, the more the merrier. Like Yeah, like, who cares? Who cares? Who literally cares? I'm I, still going to get birthday cake. Who, yeah. So who cares? And it's like... It's, they're not going to take away from your party. No. And it's a joint party anyway. There should be, like, other people coming in from, like, groups outward, you know? Yeah, like, who fucking cares? I think that you need to talk to, well, one. I think you should not be friends with this yeah, girl. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe you should reevaluate the friendship with this birthday girl because she seems a little cuckoo. Um, I think that that's wild i think that you should still go to the party and bring the people well it sounds like that's not an option it yeah, sounds like you that, have to choose at this point it would be rude at this point i would just be like oh my gosh like because i would be like sorry we have these didn't friends think in this town. was gonna be an issue didn't think this is gonna be an issue like here's the two options i can either help plan the party i'm not gonna financially contribute anymore at all because you are a see you next tuesday but I'll do that and then we will do our own thing on the party night since you don't want my friends there or my friends can join the party and yeah. I will continue to plan the party with you. Yeah. It's also extra bizarre that they all met on Bumble BFF. We are like trying to form friendships and meet Bailey, new people and then it's like, and then that's it. Yeah. Like I'm the that, people and I don't want any more. That's is the thing. An even you're that is it and i think the connection of like bumble bff like you're not real friends with this person yet like if they're gonna treat you like that they're clearly when they met no but it said that they've enjoyed getting to know each other like they have a good group of girlfriends now yeah which i think is great and then why is there like and this is the end point i don't i'm not interested in making any more friends now but it also sounds like saying i've enjoyed getting to know them makes me think that it's like maybe a year because like no i think it's like probably fairly new it it doesn't matter it doesn't even if it was a year or less it does not matter if someone's treating you like this i would 
have more loyalty to my boyfriend yeah, like re-evaluate. because that person is in, and I just got done saying like boys over girls but in this situation if a girl's being like that big of a bitch to you bye yeah. well it's also just a new person in your life you don't owe them anything that's like that. my, that's my point yeah yeah and treat that person with the same respect that they're treating you I think that that girl's treating you with no respect she's not even trying to understand the position you're in literally at all so I would just take her for what it is or for what she is Ugly. a bitch <laughs> <laughs> okay solved that one yeah <clears throat> dang this is another one looking for advice and Great. they're wondering have you girls ever had a friendship come between you guys my sister and I have always been good friends recently we both became friends with a girl and her boyfriend my sister and the new friend became close very quickly I've had a falling out with the new friend Quick background for the misunderstanding. We had all gone on a group girls weekend. My sister and our friend were being a lot. Super drunk. Ooh, like peeing your pants and puking level drunk. (laughs) So it's like if we went on a group trip and then I'm like. Bailey and our new friend are peeing their pants and puking at the same time. That's like kind of At least it wasn't something else while they were puking. That'd be messier. They needed to be babysat and were just really loud and obnoxious all weekend. I was pretty annoyed at the weekend and tried to do my own thing for the most part. After the girls weekend, we didn't really contact each other or hang out as a group. They hung out just the two of them, but I had to work school. They hung out just the two of them, but since I had to work in school and I wasn't invited, that was fine with me. I felt like I needed space after the weekend. Later in the week, my sister and her friend were at my parents' place. I was talking with my mom and boyfriend and reading an article to them off my phone when the sister and her friend came over. I didn't say hi to either of them because I was reading. I honestly didn't really talk to them. My boyfriend and I finished talking with my mom and went home. After we left, my sister's friend said she came up to me and said hi, and I looked at her and just pulled my phone out without speaking to her. This did not happen. Okay, so the friend is saying that she, like, intentionally snubbed her. Yeah. Snub. Snub. She told my mom and my sister I made her feel so uncomfortable and that she wasn't coming to a Super Bowl party we were all supposed to get together for the upcoming weekend. I messaged her, apologized for the misunderstanding, and said I hope to still see her on the weekend. Her response was, okay, thanks. So I just left it alone. I don't see us repairing the friendship as I'm not interested in reaching out again, and I don't think she is going to either. I'm happy my sister has found a friend she gets along with. I have a boyfriend who I live with. My sister lives with our parents and doesn't have many friends. It's nice that she's found another good companion, but it has caused some tension between us. Should I reach out again to try to clear the air oh. with the new friend to help my, <laughs> my friendship with my sister? Or should I just give my sister some space and let the new friendship run its course? First of all, no. Do not contact the girl. and try, Like, you did every... First of all, it was probably kind of rude of you to not look up from your phone while you were reading the article. Well, it depends on what the article was about. <laughs> but, like, you can't be like, oh, hi, one second, I'm going to read this, finish reading this, and I'll say hi. Just to, like, not make the other person feel so uncomfortable. Well, ju- yeah, like, you could have and probably should have just... If new people are walking in the room, just like acknowledge their Be presence. Like, like oh, <laughs> wave. You don't even have to like stop reading. You could just be like, Hi. like honestly, even like a head nod. Just yeah, like, like just, just like, like acknowledge a human being. Like that's like nice. Yeah, you yeah. could have you could have done that, but I also think that um, this girl just like kind of doesn't like you, and that's and, okay. But like I, my suspicion is your sister is probably soon gonna realize realize that this girl's like yeah kind of not it and she needs to figure it out on her own the thing is like you need to stand by your sister and you need to be that's like the most important relationship here so i wouldn't let anything get in between that and i would just let the relationship run its course like there's so many times we haven't liked each other's friends but like you can't let it get in the middle of your friend or your sister ship Yeah. yeah even if you have to be honest and be like Oh, Courtney's gonna be there. Like, she's I'll annoying. just hang out. I'd rather hang out with you on Tuesday. You yeah, know? or just be like, oh, we can be cool. Like, whatever. She can come to this because the thing is, like, when you are in your parents' house, like, it's that's your safe space, yeah. and so she's walking into your safe space. So you already have a leg up on her, and you need to remember that too. So when like she's coming in, making her at least feel comfortable because she's your sister's friend. Yeah, but, but also it's like so freaking weird. And this is why I don't think the friendship's going to last anyways. Like, it's so weird that when you and your boyfriend leave, she tells the sister and your mom, like, oh, 
guess what she did to Liberty? No, that's crazy. When people think that like, they can get wild. in between the sister, like yeah, I can talk shit about mom. my sister. Like you can't talk shit about my sister, like at it, all. And that's where I would hope that if someone were to say that about like one of you guys, I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. Like I can't see her doing that. Like that's so weird. Or like, and. It's she's like, my sister. She's going to be a bitch to me. We're bitches to each other, but you can't be a bitch to her. So stop. Yeah, I don't know. It, I think you just, it was nice of you to to message her and say, you know, you still hope that, you know, sorry for the misunderstanding. I still hope to see you. Like, that was really nice. And that is, that is it. That is it. That I is think it. you need to remember where your, like, priorities are. And it is to your sister. So don't make it harder on your sister. Also, I thought it was, like, kind of like a low-key dig that she's like, I'm glad my sister's finally found someone that she gets yeah. along with. <laughs> No, I also think that it kind of was like genuine. <laughs> no, I no, think I it's think like it really genuine, was. but I also think it was like kind of a dig. Because she's like, my sister lives with her, with our parents, and I have a boyfriend. And like, it was kind of just like. Yeah, but she's like, my sister doesn't have many friends. Yeah. Well, maybe I just read it as she was trying to like. No, I give think a it's. a little dig. I think it's just all facts, too. So don't it make it harder on your sister. Yeah, that sounds like and your also, going you don't through a need time. to work harder on making that girl feel better. Maybe it's something she can learn to buck up like i already said i want you to be there and i'm sorry that you felt bad like and that's more than enough oh you want to be in the sisterhood like this is how we treat each other i was gonna say it sounds like you don't have a sister yeah it sounds like that girl does not have a sister yeah the way that she's like "Uh, like i walked in the room and she didn't acknowledge me it's like okay only child (laughs) (laughs) you can really tell when someone doesn't have has not been bullied by a sister oh yeah i'm like this is what makes you upset like, like yeah this, this is this is it and I'm like i need to reevaluate every conversation i have with you because now i realize you're an only child yeah or <laughs> you have brothers or you have brothers and i you know what i just love when girls with brothers like think that they've been bullied more than girls with sisters because they it's been such a different way it's like you have dealt with physical yes war but i have dealt with <laughs> like mental warfare yeah. beyond your wildest dreams yeah. like the way we can like say things to each other and like give little digs that like if you were kind in the of room, like oh is that is that what you're wearing <laughs> yeah and that like, <laughs> there's so much in that little sentence is that what you're wearing that like if you don't have a sister then you just it, don't like Im- it. it immediately like it's a emotional fucking tornado it's or like, it's like do I look it's disgusting? Like, oh, is it my outfit? Is it my face? Is it my hair? Or like if you come in with like a new like hairstyle <laughs> and, and it's like, like oh yeah, it, I'm sure like it'll grow on me. And then it's just like, oh, I, maybe I just need to see it styled differently. Yeah. Oh my God. Then it's like, that's it'll what you're better with a different outfit on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe different shoes. Yeah. Or when you're like in Germany with your sister and she's like, you're the most judgmental person I've ever met in my life. And I thought that was like a fact that everyone knew. <laughs> And I didn't know that's the craziest thing I've ever heard you like, say. Literally, <laughs> the fact that you're like, wow, Taylor Swift's outfits are just like so hideous. And it's like, and then for me to be like, oh, yeah, like you're just such a judgmental person. No, and, and you're like, <laughs> excuse me? You're no, like shocked? No, it's not. You're a judgmental person. It was like we were in a fight and you said, I am the no, most judgmental I, we person we you've ever. We weren't in the fight oh, yet. Paige, we were in the fight. I think that's what like. Bailey, I you think, guys were like kind of dancing around the fight. <laughs> yeah, we were like the dancing. entire. <laughs> we were dancing. The entire first leg of the trip. Like we no, the first you guys day. were already in a fight. That was like day one. There was yeah. like literally day that, one. That was that was our full day. No, one. if we would have. That's why I knew I could not travel to Europe with you because if we were to travel to Europe together on the same plane, the fight would have started at the airport. Especially if I was on the same travel situation you guys were in, where like your flights are getting delayed and canceled, yeah. and you had to be rerouted and across I wouldn't the let Bailey world. Have Chick-fil-A. You wouldn't have. She like, would not let me eat. No, I would have like been like, we are going to do this separately. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Anyways, and then well, she didn't have a phone on the way back. Oh. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Which was crazy. No, but I am so glad. <laughs> With you guys for that it went really well on the way back i was just so scared it was like fuck she's well, gonna be like went, where's our itinerary it, okay. <laughs> what time did we board because it was scary because i thought that not having a phone that we would just be able to print out all of my stuff when we got to the airport and we couldn't yeah we know so that is crazy scan it twice traveling internationally truly is like it's something everyone should do because it really teaches you to just like figure Scramble. it out yeah yeah get creative truly um okay this was really long and there's still so much that we can talk about but thank god we're gonna be back every week 
every week, every Monday. Every Monday. Every Monday. And we're going to start coming out Monday at the same time every week, right? Exactly. And no. you guys can start to keep emailing us again. Start to keep emailing us. Start to keep emailing us again, yeah. Joe. <laughs> Joe, my gosh. We are not together. <laughs> we are not together. <laughs> You can, we are together. We are we together. Are all together. You are the fourth of brand sister, of course. So email us at your poor dad at gmail.com. Yeah. And maybe one day we'll get a website. Oh, we're also rebranding, yeah. which is so fun. We're doing it with this company called 99 Designs. So we're going to keep posting our favorite um, submissions on. Should I just tell them how it works? Yeah. So 99 Designs, you put your creative brief, like what you're looking for, and then different designers will give you a logo based on your brief. And then you choose the design you want. And then whatever design you choose, you work with that designer and they come up with like your branding and everything. So that's what we're doing. And then we're putting it on our stories and my stories. So it's me, Jade B, and your poor dad pod on Instagram. So make sure to vote for that. And... You can always DM us. Yep. We love the DMs. You're part done. Pardon? And you can leave us a review. Oh, yeah. Leave us a review. Five that's, stars. That's free. So And you can say whatever you want about us as long as you leave the five stars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thanks for listening. We're so glad to be back. Love ya. Bye. Bye.